going to turn with me to the book of Psalms. Familiar scripture, I won't read it in its entirety. Psalms, I'm just going to read two scriptures. 90, 90, Psalms 90, and then verse 12. When you have your, say amen. I uh, say hold on. <laughs> hold on, I'll wait on you. I'll wait on you. I like to hear the pages flip. Y'all heard that sound? Uh, amen, amen. Psalms 90, starting at verse 12, reading from the New Living Translation. It says, teach us to realize the bereavity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. Matthew 6, 33. I know about heart, but I like to turn to it and read it. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek. Somebody say seek. Seek. Okay. It says seek the kingdom of God. God give us laser pointed focus. He tells us exactly what you and I as citizens of his kingdom should be seeking. That's good, uh, Mother Margaret, that he tells us what we should be seeking after us. So nobody got an excuse to be seeking after many things because God told you and I, I and you, what we should be seeking after us. My guy says, seek, 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 seek the kingdom of God above all else. That comes before everything. That comes before everything and anything. The kingdom. The kingdom is not fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Your money shouldn't be your God. Your wife or your children shouldn't be your God. Sex shouldn't be your job. I mean, God, drugs shouldn't be your job. A God, clothes shouldn't be your God. It didn't say seek that. It says seek above all else the kingdom of God. Above everything, it's top priority is that you seek the kingdom because really life stems from the kingdom. Oh, uh, you're not living if you're not living from the kingdom. You're just existing. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If you're not living from the kingdom, you're just existing. Y'all got to stay with me up there on this mic. My God. If you're not living, Cornell, make sure my mic got batteries. My God, if you're not living from the kingdom, you're just existing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm. Above all else, then he says, live righteously. Something the church don't want to do no more. And he will give you everything. It didn't say some things. It said everything. But the key word is that, that you need. And he would even give you, because he's such a benevolent God, he would even give you some things that you, that, that you don't need. That you ain't even asked him for. <laughs> oh, my God. He just liked that. My God. Oh, Father God, I just thank you for this time. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this time. Lord, we honor you today. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Lord, as the Spirit of God stated in prayer this morning, feed the sheep and they will come. Sheep will always find the food that they need to sustain them. Oof. So, Father God, the sheep has come. Now you feed them. I'm just a vessel. Get me out of the way so that you can get in the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to go ahead and give you the title, Continuation from last Sunday, which is, my God, first thing first. This was my uh, New Year message, my God, that the praise and worship and God never allowed me to get into. <laughs> my God, because I wanted to preach it, my God, but we couldn't get out of worship. <laughs> and so God took over the service. And so then we started on last week and I made it uh, to uh, point number one, which is you have to set proper priorities. When you're seeking first the kingdom, you got to have your priorities right. If your priorities are out of order, then your life will be out of order, as I've taught you. Everything, my God, is contingent or to, uh, concerning your priorities. If your priorities are out of order, my God, your life will be out of order. I am redundant. If your priorities are not set right towards the kingdom, you will not live a kingdom life, which you will live as a frustrated Christian life. Somebody say amen. And so if you want to know, uh, uh, hear uh, point number one, I mean, something from last week, just go to YouTube and subscribe to YouTube. And it's all on this type in going off of Christ Church on YouTube and it'll pull up last week. I want to encourage you too. please make sure you get there. That was a heavy loaded message, my God, about priorities and being able to prioritize your life, my God. Who you got to keep your priorities right. And when your priorities right, it'll guard you against people, places, and things that come to interfere and disrupt what God is trying to do in your life. I said when you keep your priorities right, it 
will guard you against, my God, people, places, and things that has come to interrupt your life. Many of you got people in your life that's weighing you down and hindering what God is trying to do in your life. Many of us go places, my God, that's not healthy and beneficial for us. My God, instead of us infecting the environment, the environment that we're going is affecting us. Let me slow down and teach you, my God, instead of us going to infect, my God, and to, my God, to let our light shine in an ungodly environment, and my God, the environment began to dim our light because we don't have enough power to infect it. We let it affect us. That's called contamination. So, therefore, if I'm not healthy enough to go into a dark environment around certain people, places, and things, then what I need to do is make sure that I back up and do a real self-evaluation. Say, okay, I'm really not strong enough. I'm really not, my God, anchored enough in God to be around that place. So, therefore, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove myself from being in a place that I don't have the power to influence because it has the power to influence me. Yeah, it's okay, my God. I have been in places where I'm not qualified. So therefore, I have to understand that if I'm not qualified, just bow to the game and humble yourself. Decrease and let those that are supposed to increase, increase. It's okay yeah. to be a fly on the wall, baby. You ain't got to be the life of the party everywhere you go. Yeah. Sit back and glean. Yeah. Learn how to glean from people that know more than you. And when your self-esteem is right, I see y'all back there, daughter. When your self-esteem and stuff is right, my God, you want to place people around you that know more than you know. It's okay to have people with staff your weakness, staff your weakness. Put people around you, my God, that's gifted in areas that you're not gifted. Quit being so insecure, my God. I don't uh, Put people around you that can help you, my God, become what God has called you to become. So we're going to deal with first things first. Uh, the first thing you have to do, as I told you, you have to set proper priorities. How can you shout about 2019 in the new year when your priorities are still messed up from 2012, 2013, 2016, 2017? You're still operating off broken priorities. God is still not the number one priority in your life. Church don't mean nothing to you. Come on, because you're always criticizing the pastors and the people. And you say it's too many hypocrites go to church. Well, when you showed up, there go another one. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. We all got some hypocrisy in us. I said we all got hypocrisy in us to a degree. I said we all got some form of something that we shouldn't be doing. I mean, should be doing that we ain't doing. Well, you're a hypocrite. Oh, that was kind of stern, though. Well, maybe I'm just struggling. Well, maybe I'm just, well, put what you want to put on. We got some level of hypocrisy in us. And so we're going to move to point two because I feel good. Baby, cold flow with me. My God, I feel good. So, my God, after you set your priorities right, when your priorities are set right, you might want to get ready to take some notes, then guess what your priorities will do? It's going to affect your personal lifestyle. Here we come. Y'all ready? I said, are you ready? Not only are we to be seeking God's control, control, if you're going to let anything or anybody control you, let God control you. Amen. If we're going to be seeking God's control over, but we, but we must, we, we are to also be seeking God's character in us. If we're going to be seeking God's control over us, we got to also be seeking God's character within us. The kingdom of God is not, is, is not the only, is not to only be outwardly changing you, but it should be inwardly changing you. Amen. Let me show down. It should not be only uh, outwardly affecting you, but it should be inwardly cha uh, changing you. Mm, are you with me so far? It is to be outwardly expressed. The kingdom of God should be outwardly expressed. Loose my tongue. I bind the devil in the name of Jesus. Mm. So much spiritual activity on this consecration. Ah, come on, going over Christ. Pray for your pastor right quick. I don't hear you praying. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You ain't got to be speaking in tongues. Just pray. God give pastor favor. Loose pastor's voice. Make him slow down. Make him my God. Loose his tongue. Loose his tongue. Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. Touch me. Oh my God. Breathe on me God. Breathe on me God. He, thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Set my soul aright. I bind every witch. I bind every warlock. I bind all principality. Oh my God. Whatever walked up in there God. I plead the blood of Jesus all around me, every ungodly spirit, everything that's in her that's not of you, Father God, get it out the atmosphere, get it out the environment, Father God, chase every demon up out of her, chase every spirit up out of her, Father God, loose me in the name of Jesus, loose me in the name of Jesus, oh my God, I've been fasting, I'm praying, I know I'm in order, I bind you, Satan, you can't come against my tongue, 
You can't come against this message, my God. Set your people free in the name of Jesus, my God. Oh, my God. Somebody give God a shout right now. I need you to flow with me right here, man. Okay, 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 okay. okay. My God, see, some of you might not understand this. It's called warfare. Oh, my God, because there's real warfare in this church because people's lives are being changed and affected, and so the enemy don't want you free. My God, what I go through is about you. My God, Ooh, my God, mm, I need some volume, son. I need some volume, son. Oh, my God, I need some volume, son. My God, it's called warfare. If any can bind me up, that means you stay free. Oh, you stay bound. If I'm free, you get free. You need to understand warfare. You need to understand warfare. Oh, my God, come on, somebody. Hey! God, oh Jesus, yeah, Jesus, mm. thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. I can feel the pressure of the enemy. Yeah, the enemy shows up at church too. Don't get it twisted, King Kid. Yeah, my God, come on, one more time, shout to the Lord. Come on, shout to the Lord, amen. 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 You may be seated if you can. Thank you, man of God. I know it ain't you, but it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, man of God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And so when your priorities are set right, my God, mm, it begins to affect your lifestyle. It begins to affect your lifestyle. So we're going to start this thing over. Not only are we to be seeking God's control over us, but we are also to be seeking God's character within us. The kingdom of God is not only to be inwardly experienced, it is to be outly expressed. If God is ruling over you, then his righteousness will be within you. If God is ruling over you, my God, the king, my God, our Lord and Savior, my God, Jesus Christ, my God, is king, my God, in heaven. And so the Bible says that the earth is his footstool. He sets his foot on top of the earth. He rules the earth. The Bible says that God gave you and I dominion over the earth, rulership. So what is I'm saying, my God? You and I should never let anything other than God rule you. Are you with me so far? And so if God has rulership over our lives, then God should be controlling our lives. You can't say God has rulership over your life and then you do whatever you want to do. And you live however you want to live. That's not rulership. You can't submit to the king, my God, when you want to. Either you submitted to God or you're not submitted to God. Jesus said either you for me or you are against me. That's what the Bible says, church. Are you with me so far? Because a man's character, no, 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 no gender because of a man, because a man's character is simply the outward expression of whatever is controlling him inwardly. So I'm going to replace man with a person's character. What you see produced external is what you, what's going on internal. Seed produces seed out of his own kind. So when you look at a man or a woman's conduct or character, uh, you're seeing what's going on the inside. If it's good fruit, then we got something going on good on the inside. If it's rotten and contaminated fruit and it's always excuses, it's always bitterness, it's always cussing and lying and conniving because that's what's going on on the inside. Are you with me so far? Well, Pastor, what about those that sound real good and dress it up real good and speak in a whole lot of tongues and got a whole lot? Of, just watch their fruit. Eventually, fruit will always tell off on you. People can only fake it. It's true for so long. Are you with me so far? And so when your priorities are set right, when God has rulership over your life, when you have submitted to wholeheartedly to God, when you honor and respect the king, when you understand that you are coming to a king and you and I put to submit to the king, because when you and I submit to the king, then the king has legal authority in your life. So, my God, when you are part of a kingdom, the king, you, are, you become responsible for the king. The king is responsible to make sure that he take care of you. He's responsible to make sure that he feeds you. He's responsible to make sure that if he's sick, that he help you get healed. 
Oh, my God. So that's why it's so important to be in proper alignment with the king. That's why it's so important to be in good standing with the king. Come on, somebody. You can't ask the king to bless you when you're out of order with the king. Oh, my God. You can't say, God, bless me, my God, when you got your mind made up, though, though you want something from him, but your heart ain't submitted to him. That's why I say they worship me with their mouth, but their heart. I'm not ruler. I'm not Lord. To many people, he's just savior, but he's not capital L-O-R-D. I don't care how fresh we look. I don't care how cute you are. If he's not L-O-R-D, capital L-O-R-D, he's not Lord and Savior. See, they say he's Savior now, but he's Lord and Savior. Do I got any witnesses in the house of the Lord? Mm. Oh, we going somewhere. I have to teach you. My God. So therefore, many people, my God, will come and give their life to Christ, but they don't make him Lord. So the Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Believe, 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 believe. So man said it's not enough just to confess Christ. You got to believe in Christ. And when you believe in Christ, that means you begin to allow the spirit of the living God to set your priorities right. And when your priorities are set right, then you start prioritizing your lifestyle. Then what you and I do, we start falling in love with the king and his decree. We start, my God, loving what he loves and hating what he hates. So therefore, what used to work don't work no more. The clubs that we used to to, we don't want to go to no more. The people we used to hang out with and open up to, we don't open up to no more. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there because we want a lifestyle change. Priorities affect your lifestyle. You can always tell when he's not Lord because you got many people that come to church and they don't care what they live like outside the church. You don't, yeah. They don't even have a love to read his word. Yeah. Many of them come to church, but they don't know how to live inside this embassy, this, inside this kingdom. In order to learn how to execute the king's, my God, sovereign rule in your life, you got to be able to read his word. If you're not flipping the page, if you're not spending time, well, pastor, I don't understand the word. I don't understand it all either, but they don't give me an excuse not to read. You read all that stuff on Facebook, won't you take time to read the word of God? You spend four hours on trying to trying to understand and be nosy and look at everybody's Facebook and I spend time right back. Say, God, I'm here. I, I just showed up. Now feed me, God. I didn't open up the Constitution. Feed me, God. I don't understand it all, but feed me, God. Teach me. The Holy Spirit said, You don't need nobody to teach. You. I'm gonna teach you. I'm like, God. Priorities, priorities, priorities. Some of us, my God, we see Facebook more important than reading God's Constitution. See, so we, don't, we don't make no excuse about looking at Facebook and Instagram, whatever that yeah. stuff is, my God. But we'll make all kinds of excuses when it comes to reading the word. Yes, yes. Priority, wrong priorities. And that's why your lifestyle ain't changing. That's why you're still dealing with the same hangups and habits. I'm talking to the Christians. I'm going to pick you up in a minute to stay with me right quick. I want you to do right. I want you to live right. I care about your life. I don't want you dragging 2018 and 12 into 2019. You are kings. You are queens. You are fearfully made. Come on, somebody. You got to act like who you are. And so, therefore, a man's character is simply the outward expression, which is sin. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, what am I seeing? Oh, some of you don't want to look at the. I know. I know. They ain't going to judge you. They just going to call it like it is. Faith is always seen by its fruit. Yeah. Write that down. Yeah. Real, genuine, godly faith submitted to lordship is always seen by its fruit. Real, genuine faith submitted to lordship is always seen by healthy fruit. That's a heavy, heavy statement. Don't tell me you got faith and you ain't got no fruit. We know what James said. If you say you got faith, I'm going to show you I got faith by what I do, not by what I say. So you got faith in God, but do your conduct show that? Yeah. Character is always seen by his conduct. Yes. Faith is always seen by his fruit, but character is always seen by his conduct. Are y'all with me so far? See what I'm trying to say? So you can tell a what? A tree by the so 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 you don't you and I I you don't get the privilege to say. You can't judge me. Okay, let me bring some, some balance to this. Because the scriptures say, woman of God, Paul, it's not my right to judge those outside of the family, the body of Christ. But if you profess to be a Christian, then I have a right if the fruit or the conduct that you are displaying or expression 
my, uh, expressing my God don't line up with the Constitution. It's my job to come to you and say, brother. It's my job to come to you and say, sister, can I have a little talk with you? Ah, uh, you know you might want to take that down off of Facebook. Come on, minister of the gospel. Why you got all this alcohol in that picture? You misrepresenting the king and the kingdom. You're making the church look bad. Come on, somebody. And so, therefore, when somebody coming to deal with you about something, my God, that's not fruitful and healthy, then I have a right. Here's the balance. Don't come tell me about something I'm doing, uh -huh. but you're doing the same thing I'm doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I can't, so, so the word of God, I'm scripture. So I can't give you a pass, even though what you're what you telling me is truthful, but you're doing the same thing. Right. That's why it says take the board, a pleck, a speck out of your eye yeah. before you go try to take it out of somebody else's eye. Yeah. See, so, so that's why you got to be led by the spirit of the living God. So when you come to somebody, my God, saying something to them, they can receive it when you're led. But if you're going off of emotion, if you're going because you're trying to make her feel bad, look bad, see what you're to say, they're going to reject what you bring to them. But if you come out of being led by the Spirit, they're going to receive it, especially if he's Lord in their life. Uh, see, a goat, my God, they're going to receive that. But a real sheep, my God, will receive that. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I said a goat won't receive it, but a sheep will. That's why you got to be led. Deliver. To deliver. Right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. Right now in the name of Jesus. Break the habit in the name of Jesus. Heal Kendall's heart right now in the name of Jesus. Heal his mind right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're healing his pain. You're healing his frustration, Father God. Everything that's keeping him in any form of bondage, Father God, break it in the name of Jesus. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance, Father God. I claim his soul up out of the pits of darkness right now. I bind the spirit of alcoholism right now in the name of Jesus. I curse the spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And I command it to come out of this man of God right now in the name of Jesus. Today is the day. No more. Why Wash him clean. Clean up his heart, Father God. Cut away. Cut away. Oh, my God, the demonic spirit of alcoholism in the name of Jesus. So, so you and I has a right. You and I have a right, my God, to approach your brother and your sister, my God, when their conduct and their fruit, my God, is a stumbling block to the body. Yeah. Yeah. You have a right. Yeah, Quit getting offended at somebody that the Spirit of God led them to you, my God, because you're out of order. Yeah. Am I my brother's keeper? We supposed to be. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? How you going to call yourself a Christian and can't nobody tell you no when they're telling you the truth? Yeah. That's a goat attitude. Yeah. Yeah. So write, write down Matthew uh, 23. It says, what sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees? Jesus said, this is G, hypocrites. I'm not calling y'all that. For you are so careful. Watch this. You are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy. Bring me that cup right there up under you right there, son. Come on, come on, quickly. This usually has tea. I drink tea. If I set this cup up there, that cup look real good on the outside. Get a good look at that. Because this, let me make, I'm going to make you understand what the scripture's saying. That cup look real good. Ain't a stain on it. Ain't a scratch on it. Jesus told the teachers of the law. These are the religious people that got on suits and, and got a whole lot of education and ain't never been through nothing. They look down on people like me and Champ and Tanya. You know, <laughs> That should have been all, y'all. Come on, I can't get on my hand like that. He said, you hypocrites. He said, you so focused on what you look like, external. But when you take the top off and look in the inside of that, that look black. Look at that. On the outside, it's silver. Look at the inside. That's black. This is what the word of God is saying. Outside, you're clean. Inside, you're filthy. We in the body of Christ is good at presenting the outside. But at going home for Christ church, like my daughter said, my God, we deal with the inside. 
I tell a person, if you allow God to change the inside, he going to take care of the outside. I tell them when I was doing a lot of speaking out when I came home from prison 20 plus years ago, I said, you ain't got to tell a kid to pull their pants up. Let God get a hold of their image. See, the reason why they're sad because they're trying to live up to an image, a false perception of who they are, so they keep their pants down. But when they start seeing themselves as kings, ha, when they start seeing themselves, my God, as ambassadors of God's kingdom, when they start seeing themselves as kingdom dominion people, my God, they'll pull their pants up and they, they want to look like who they are, my God. All they're doing is trying to imitate who they think they are. They're confused. Ha, they ain't got no good role models, just me, my God. All you got to do is allow God to affect the inside, my God, change their self esteem, change their perception about themselves and then they'll clean up the outside Jesus is telling the church quit worrying about the outside Old Testament as I've taught y'all they dealt with external a whole lot of external rituals a whole lot of external sacrifices and so forth everything was about external coming and make sacrifices when Jesus came my God in the New Testament he said the kingdom of heaven is within then he said, okay, we're not going to deal with the external because God understood that if I get the internal right, I'll clean him up. <laughs> I'll clean up an alcoholic. I'll clean up a drug addict. I'll clean up a game banger. I'll clean up a whore mugger. But he's going to clean you up from the inside, not from the outside. Quit dressing it up and say, God, clean my nasty heart up. Clean my nasty attitude up. Change my appetites. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Hey, somebody give God a hand in the church, man. Proper priorities cleans up the inside. So, oh my God, I'm coming. I'm coming. He said, so clean up the inside. He said, on the inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. When he's not Lord, it's all about you. It says self, mother. I'm taking my time and breaking the scripture down. Self-indulgence. That means it's your will and ain't God's will. I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. The pastor can't tell me nothing. God can't tell me nothing. My husband can't tell me nothing. My wife can't tell me nothing. Can't nobody tell me nothing. It's all about me. It's me and mine. Then it's on me. Yeah. On me. I'm grown. I can do it. I, I said on me. Y'all come on. Y'all yeah. don't. Yeah. I can do what I want to do. I come to church when I want to. Even though Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 tells us not to forsake coming to the house of the Lord. It's strength when the sheep come to eat, my God. It's strength when the sheep show up, my God. Somebody got a key to unlock your depression. Somebody got a key to bless your soul, my God. Somebody got a key to help your self-image, your self-esteem. Some, my God, you stay at home and you just missed out on somebody sowing a hundred out of seed in your life to pay your water bill because your butt stayed at home. Ah, I said you missed out on a hundred out of seed that God said sold it into a life but you stayed at home and now you miss your blessing now you ain't got no lights or water yeah. when God said go to the house of the Lord so I can take her that meal yeah, 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 yeah. it's power with fellowship yeah, yeah. it's power with coming together yeah, yeah. oh my God you can always tell a goat because they don't want a fellowship yeah yeah yeah, yeah. got sheep clothes on with a goat mindset Ain't got no lifestyle outside the church. Oh my God, it's full of greed and self indulgence. Are you selfish? When you don't honor God with your giving, that means you're selfish. When you give God $3, my God, and you know that ain't your tithe, then you're selfish. That's greed. You hold it on because you're greedy. Yeah. You done bought up all this old stuff, my God, now you're trying to pay the. Mm, I'm trying to be careful, but you, I'm just trying to teach you, church, because I love you. Yeah. You're greedy when you don't give God what belongs to God. That's Bible. Yeah. I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm trying to help you. Y'all know I'm a builder of people, so therefore I got to say things that most pastors won't say because they don't care about it. They care about your money, but I care about your life. I don't need your money. I need your life so God can take care of business in his kingdom. So Jesus is breaking the scripture down. They see you're greedy. It's all about you and what you want to do. And the church is full of that everywhere around the nation. Jesus said, my God, if you like that today, sit in this church. Jesus, not your pastor, saying you are operating as, I'm going to bring it to grace, operate as a hypocrite. Yeah. I didn't call you one, but you're operating, your fruit show that you're, yeah. you're operating as a hypocrite. Yeah. I didn't call you that. The book called you that. If you don't get mad, get mad at God. And be careful, because he's going to get you if you stay mad at him. So you're full of greed and self-indulgence. Then God goes on to say, he said, you blind Pharisees. He ain't talking about blind naturally. He's talking about blind spiritual. You know what I mean? People with Charlotte is blind in the church because they're being entertained. They're not being pastored. I told y'all, people that know who they are, you don't have to pastor them, you lead them. People that don't know who they are, you got to always pastor them. You have to, uh, sheep know God's voice. Sheep know their pastor's voice, but sooner or later, I don't have to micromanage you because you operate in purpose. 
when your priorities are set right, I ain't got to micromanage you. I ain't got to worry about you calling and texting and all that. Inbox. My God, because you're my God, you're, doing on, you're carrying on your assignment. you operating in purpose. You're seeking first the kingdom, and you're living righteously, my God. I ain't got to worry about you. You're carrying on a great work. My God, whenever you need a report, just report. Other than that, get out there and get it done, baby. You ain't got to tell me what you're doing. Get out there and get it done. You ain't got to report to me. Just obey God and do what God told you to do, and just report. Oh, this is heavy kingdom. Oh, y'all want church? This ain't church. This is kingdom. This is an embassy, a kingdom over here. And then y'all come on, Dr. Milesman. Roll. Yeah. This report. You ain't got you ain't got to always tell me know what you're doing. And your business, because your fruit gonna show up sooner or later. Yeah, my God. When you're carrying on great kingdom business, my God, you ain't gotta tell nobody. They're gonna see it by your conduct and your fruit. I ain't got no mm-hmm. And when you're doing it right, my God, it'll show up in the office. Come on, man. <laughs> And you went from 500 to 10,000 and off. I can't hear nobody say nothing right there. Oh, my God, whatever God calls for, he blessed for. I'm talking about going from 500 to 10 grand. Or just show up when you're having a business, Sandra. I see you, Shannon. Good to see you, son. Thank you, Lord. We're talking about priorities affecting lifestyle. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm trying to get up out of this scripture, but it's real. My God, so focus internal. Make up your mind that you refuse to be a hypocrite. Make up your mind that that right there won't, atta- won't be assigned to your life come judgment day. That won't be on God. That won't be on your hands. You're not going to be so externally focused where you're not, my God, focused internally. When you focus internally, when you are focused internally, when you set your priorities to focus internally, you're saved now. Many of you are saved. If you're not saved, we're going to give you a chance to get saved. But if you are saved now, you got to take your focus from being saved now to being inwardly transformed. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it is, man of God. <laughs> Lord God, why you call me? And when we seek the kingdom, my God, my God, when we seek the kingdom, people should be able to see the kingdom in us. When you seek the kingdom, when you have pointed focus, when you have laser focus, people ought to be able to see the kingdom. I'm glad you asked. Turn with me to the book of Genesis. God gave me this revelation at 6 this morning. From reading the one year word of God. Mm. Genesis chapter 39. Starting at verse number 2. The Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. So he succeeded. Watch this in everything he did. As he served in the home of the Egyptian master. So all of you that come to church but you don't never serve. You are disqualifying yourself from the king recognizing you. If you just come into church as a sheep to eat and then leave out to live any kind of way, you are disqualifying yourself yeah. in the king's kingdom. Watch this. This is heavy. So hospitality should grow after today, Mama Donna. I'm being serious. Because you have a many sheep that come and eat, but they don't serve. The Bible says that the Lord was with Joseph because he served Minister Janice in the house. He was carrying on his father's business. He was submitted to the king. Taking care of kingdom business. See what I'm trying to say? He wasn't caught up, my God, in gossip. He wasn't caught up in all that mess. He was laser focused, my God. His priority was right. Come on, he was sold into purpose, my God. It felt like a trial, but it was purpose that he was sold into, my God, because God was orchestrating, my God, and perfecting his will, but he was serving. Oh, my God, Jesus said, I didn't come to serve, my God. I, I be served, but I come to serve. See what I'm trying to say? And so Joseph was serving. Watch this, y'all. It blowed my mind when God brought it to me. Serving his master. Ah, I ain't finna serve nobody. You know, I'm grown just like you grown. I, you know, I know more. I make more money than you make. You know, I ain't finna serve. That's pride. That's a goat attitude. Yeah. The Bible says that the man of God was serving his master because he understood, my God, a kingdom mind. It says, Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph. Here was Potiphar. Ooh, Tony. <laughs> Who didn't even believe in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's God. Tony, I'm heavy. Barry, look at me, look at me. Who is an ungodly, evil king that didn't even believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But because the Lord was with Joseph, and Joseph was in the house serving, the Bible says that Potiphar, oh my God, who was the, uh, 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 who was the armor bird really to, 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 to Pharaoh, recognized this. Watch this, watch this. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord, capital L, read your book. He said, okay, he don't even serve Jesus. 
he ain't got no affiliation with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he said, he, the Bible said that he recognized that the capital Lord <laughs> was with Joseph. And it pleased him. Oh, my God. Watch this. Watch this. He, he said, he said, and then it said, giving him, I'm talking about Joseph's success. Talking about God giving Joseph success in everything he did. It says, this pleased Potiphar, so he soon made, made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge over his entire household and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household, oh my God, and, and, and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's house, household for Joseph's sake. He did it for, it wasn't even about Potiphar, it's about the man of God that God strategically placed. <laughs> Strategically play. See, God's trying to place some of you in strategic positions to influence and affect the world. That's why you got to be patient. That's why it takes patience to do the will of God. You got to mix faith and patience go hand in hand. My God, quit getting ahead of God, my God, because God's trying to strategically, my God, place you in positions so that you can have mega influence. God's going to bring you in 2019, my God, to a new level, my God, in certain places. Let God's will, perfect will be done in your life. God strategically placed Joseph, my God, in Potiphar's house, my God, so that Potiphar can understand now, I understand this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, but guess how he got there? He was sold two times. <laughs> oh, God gave me a title to the sermon, my God, of uh, sold into purpose. <laughs> what felt like pain was purpose. <laughs> what felt like trouble was purpose. What turned out to be a bad situation in the natural turned out to be a supernatural breakthrough in the kingdom. <laughs> oh, my God. Sold into purpose. Hey, my God. So, 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 because Joseph, my God, and the Lord was with Joseph, my God. So, my God, Potiphar began to recognize. And acknowledge this Lord. The Bible says, my God, that Potiphar did not concern himself with nothing but what he going to eat. That's kingdom. That's kingdom. That is kingdom when the Bible says that the Lord, throughout the story, my God, of Joseph's life, my God, it always said that the Lord was with Joseph. And everything he did, daughter, prospered. I'm talking about no matter where you put him at. No matter where you put him, ooh, thank you. No matter what you put him over, when he left it, it was fruitful. When you place somebody over something and there's no further loan, when you gave it to him, they didn't manage and steward that what you put him over right. Because anytime you leave some something, it should have some evidence that you was fruitful. That's why we got to quit trying to do stuff by the flesh. Because the hand of the Lord was on Joseph's life. Potiphar, who did not believe in Jesus, recognized that and acknowledged his God, our God. That's powerful, Lawanya. Can people recognize our God on your life and in your life? See, you got to get to where, 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 where it's not on you, as Keisha would tell me. She made me a sweatshirt, but it's in you. When the kingdom of heaven is in you, it affects your character, yes. which in turn affects your lifestyle, yes, which in turn sets your priorities in order, yes. which in turn gives you favor. Yes. No matter what the enemy try to do, you'll be able to say like Joseph, yes. the enemy meant for bad, God will turn it around for good. Yes. And so let me ask you this question. Mm. The real mark of a Christian is that they make it easy for others to believe in God. Can people believe in God because of your life? Have your God that you profess to serve affected your inward life to the point, or your lifestyle to the point, to people, when you walk by, you going one way, they going the other way. But when you walk past them, they turning around looking. Is that Juju? I heard he was saying. You mean he ain't banging no more? He ain't selling no crack no more. He ain't smoking crack no more. He don't weigh 123 pounds no more. Now that. Hey, Juju. What's happening? That's what I do. What's happening? Hey, man. My God, you don't remember me? If I don't know you, I'm looking you in. Come on, baby, call. We been. Uh, no, I don't. What's happening? 
Because y'all see it. Y'all, I'm serious. Y'all see how I backed up? Because see, I used to get down there and get down through the baby. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The enemy trying to kill me, Tamil. He terrified of me because I know who I am in Christ. My God, ooh, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. So he's trying to destroy everything connected to me. He want to kill me, my God. He want to stop my voice. Come on, I can't get nobody to say nothing. Because y'all delivers is tied up in the mouth deliver. As I got free, y'all got free. So he want to kill your pastor, my God. And so I'm like, no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember you, homie, but what's happening? After I didn't, but see, all I'm doing all this, though, I didn't peep him and he ain't strapped. And so then I stepped to him like, what's happening? See what I'm trying to say? Yeah, what's happening? No, no, see, that ain't, that's wisdom. Because I know where I come from. Just because I'm in God don't mean nothing. I know where I come from. And I know the type of work I have to put in for the devil. My God, don't get it twisted, my God. Who the enemies after key or still and destroy, baby? Just because you say it don't mean you ain't got no enemies, my God. And if you're affecting the kingdom of darkness, how, my God, if you're handling your business for God, the enemy want to kill you. You are a target, my God. He's trying to kill you. You better ask somebody to quit playing with the devil, my God. The enemy, my God, is trying to kill all of you if you're operating in purpose. And so do people recognize, Brother Taylor, stay with me, man, stay with me, stay with me, man. My God, do people recognize the God of that you serve? Have people seen the God that you and I profess to serve? My God, my God, show up in your life. So come on up here, Trey. So come on up here. Come on, come on, come on, son, come on. Come on, I'm flowing. Come on, you got to move. You got to move. And so here go a young brother. Come on, son. See, 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 God gave me this testimony when I went and got my hair cut. Yesterday morning, I was in school to shop, and he was in school to, uh, had Trey stay a little longer because school didn't know that I come right behind him. And so as soon as I bust through the door, my God, here come light, and here come the kingdom. And so what I do, my God said, put your book down, let's hold up, and let's pray. And I stood a bum board in heaven. Oh, my God, and praying and this and that. Come on, somebody. But then when I got through praying, Trey said, Pastor. I said, what's happening? <laughs> he said, Pastor, I don't smoke weed no more. So, 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 so let me give it to you. So I come in, I'm praying, bam, bam, you know what I'm saying? Because when the kingdom show up, you know, everything got to come. Mm, come on, I see it. Totally. When you when, see, you got the kingdom living on the show. When you show up, you're supposed to affect it. It can't affect you. Any environment you go into, my God, you should affect the environment. That environment affect you. Somebody give God a hand. My God. Oh, my God. So many times, oh my God, so many times, let me, let me show this, you can sit down if you can. So here's Trey, my God, the woman of God been coming to the church, she on fire for God, she loving God, come meet you, you know what I say, but here's the man of God, here's the man of God coming to the church, and this is where, this is a story, you know, I'm going to say it because I got to move quickly. I know he used to come to church high, and sit right over there. One day I told him, I said, this keeps showing up. Just keep showing up. I'm talking about come up in the house smelling like nothing but dody. Smell it all across the church. See what I'm trying to say? All across the church. And so therefore I said, just keep showing up. And what got him, see, see, because some of y'all don't understand who you're sitting up under and who preached to you every week. And so what got him is that ain't no pastor ever told him nothing like that. Because he called pastor, he thought pastor was going to say, look here, man, you got to do something different. You can't be coming up in my church with all of that. See, but I did just the opposite. Because, see, you don't forget where you come from. God snatched me out, so God snatched him out. So, 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 so he kept showing up. He kept showing up. He kept showing up. He kept showing up. And so when the Spirit of God spoke, my God, uh, at that first, at that first, right before we got ready for the, 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 the when the men and women came together, my God, and we was getting ready for the, 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 20, the 20, 144, when we was getting ready for the, for the 21-day consecration, I looked at him. Because I was led by the spirit. And I spoke to the demon. It's like I spoke to this demon over here. See what I'm trying to say? And I told him. I said, you give me 21 days of no smoking. You watch what God do. So, so, we start. Ooh, shout out that Yeah, 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 yeah. So we started the consecration January 2nd. And he told me in that prayer. He said, he said, pastor, I had a whole jar full of weed. When we started the consecration. So I just throwed it. I gave it all. and said, here, y'all take it. But he should have thrown the trash. But he just gave it out to the port and walking around handing out weed. You know? Well, it's illegal now. So come on. <laughs> but watch this. Watch this. Though. I ain't through. 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 I said, give me 21 days. And see, this is what I told him. See, because you know I'm a soul winner. See, I don't preach for happiness. I preach for your soul. And see, I told him. I said, you got to submit to it. I said, what happened was, my God, as I get ready to give y'all this, ex this export to it, my God, is that you submitted to the king. 
The king, huh? I'm an under shepherd to the king. And you submitted to my voice. You got in line with the consecration. And now you're seeing God do the miraculous in your life. Many of you ain't got no breakthrough in this consecration because you ain't submitted. You didn't submit. You blowed out the fast. You said, don't take all that, my God. And you're still in bondage. You ain't no farther along than when we started the fast. Come on, somebody. But this man who submitted to the under shepherd of God. Oh, my God. He got in line with the king's decree. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. I said he got in line with the king's decree. My God. Mm. My God, I said he got in line with the king's decree. And when you get in line with the king's decree, God gave it to me and I give it to you. And when you line up to what God said through me, my God, now you're in order. Now you posture yourself and you position yourself for God to do the supernatural. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered to the heart of man. The things I got in store for those that I submitted, those that love me, those that's committed, those that's striving, those that's seeking, those that push back the plate, those that's closed their legs, those that decide to lay it down. I got plans for you. Oh, I'm going to blow your mind 2019. I'm going to propose you. I'm going to put you in different position. I'm going to strategically place you place there. They're going to say, how did she get that job? How did he get that job? Oh, they're going to say, but the Lord was with him and the Lord was with her. Somebody give God a hand in the church. Out. Oh, but I ain't through. I, I, I got one more, Tony. Hold on, because if you get on that mic, that, that piano, I'm going to be, I'm going to lose it. I got to finish. I got to finish. Oh, my God. And so therefore, mm -hmm. so I told him, I said, okay. He said, but guess what else, Pastor? I went from making $12, now I make $20. That's okay, too. But, I, but, 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 that, but that, that's, I don't want you to clap on that. I want you to clap on what I'm going to say now. Hold your pastor's hand. See, this is covenant. <laughs> Oh, this is a young. See, see, you got to know what it is. See, 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 if you want to be entertained, go sit in there. Go, go, go sit somewhere where you can be entertained. But if you want deliverance, this is your church, baby. If you want to be free, you sit right here. Oh, my God. Some people think they're free and they left before they time. Oh, you talking about you outgrow the church, but you can't keep your legs cold, but you outgrow the church. The devil is a lie. Oh, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. You didn't moved on from people, places, and things, but your lifestyle is still raggedy. Your lifestyle is still defeated. I'm not putting you down. I'm calling like a T.I.E. Don't run from the process. I know you're going through trials and tribulation. I know sometimes it get hard. I know sometimes you want to quit mamas and single mamas and single fathers and so forth, but you got to stay the court. You got to stay intentional. You got to stay submitted. You got to stay committed. And you got to say, Lord, by God, if God be for me, who could be against me? You got to tell yourself that I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. That it ain't no shadow turning. God, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. God, I'm not going to tap out because I'm a real one. I ain't going to quit on it because I didn't quit on Satan, so I can't quit on God. I'm going on. I'm ten toes in the game. The devil is alive. You just struck and I just struck back. I strike back by my lifestyle. I'm going to worship you even longer. I'm going to pray even harder. I'm going to study even longer. I refuse to quit. I refuse to give up. I didn't give up, Brendan, on the devil. I won't give up on God. Real ones don't quit. Real ones stay down, baby. Quit talking about your real grace. My God, used to be and you quit on God. Gangsters don't quit, they stand, my God. And then you become a gangster for Christ to advance God's kingdom. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Somebody give God a shout. Oh, my God. Hey. Oh, my God. Oh, some of you, some of you, I'm sorry. Some of you say, that's a gangster church. No, it ain't no gangster church. It's a real church. Somebody give God a hand. So, 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 let me give y'all this. Oh, God is flowing. See, like God has stopped time. I can't get nobody. Yeah, Lord, bullshit. So, so he got 20. But I see, this is what I told him. See, because I'm always looking for an opportunity to teach. A pastor should be preaching, teaching, and healing. So what you're seeing about here is somebody been taught, preached to, and now healed because of God. So, so, but see, this is what I told him. He gave me 21 days. He ain't smoked no weed, gave away all of his weed. He read his Bible. And they pay their tithes. But I said, that's good. I said, but this is how I taught him, mother. But if you had not listened to what God said through me to you, when it came time for you to get the job, you would have been dirty. You would have, have disqualified yourself from a promotion. 
Many of you are disqualifying yourself for promotion because you got a negative attitude. You're not listening and submitted to the God that lives on the inside of your pastor. You heard, but your heart ain't right. You heard, but you ain't submitted. You heard, but you do what you want to do, my God. This man is standing up here as a testimony because he submitted to God first, and then he submitted to the under shepherd to Christ, and now God has blessed him. <laughs> Took it from $12 to $20. Oh, my God. Now he, God has restored everything between him and his dad. Look at over there crying and giving God the glory. She went hard first. <laughs> I can't get nobody to say nothing. Come all the way in, son. Don't play with it, baby. Come all the way in. I'm talking to you, baby. Don't play with it. Get all the way in, baby. Give up the marijuana. Give up the sex. Oh, come on all the way in. Oh, God got great stand for you. Because the devil could have killed you, but he didn't, my God. Because God got a plan for you, man of God. Get all the way in. Quit hitting and missing and get all the way in and submit. Because God got great things for you, my God. Who am, I, who am I talking to in the church? Somebody give God a shout. It's deliverance over here, King Ken. Ain't nobody playing over here, baby. It's a real church baby yeah this is real over here baby let's give God a hand go ahead Trey go ahead my God 21 days what happened right there God just revealed himself to that young man now watch this thank you Holy Ghost now he got a relationship with God he don't need my voice at that level because God has showed himself to him personally now he has a personal relationship with Christ Amen, kill. Y'all sit down. Let me finish. I got a little time. God ain't told me to quit. Y'all know I quit when the Spirit of God say quit. My God. So I wanted to use that as a testimony. As we seek the, who oh my God, as we seek the kingdom, people, as I said, should be able to see the kingdom in us. And the real mark, as I stated, of a Christian is that they make it easier for others to believe. And so now I'm building them up, getting prepared for the persecution. Because many friends talking about, oh, you over there with Juju. You over there, you know what I'm trying to say? You over there, money's friends won't even come to church with him. See what I'm trying to say? They talking about him. He told me on Instagram, I ain't on that stuff. I don't know what they're, they're talking about. I said, keep standing. Blessed is the man who suffer persecution for righteousness. sake. stand. I said, some of them same ones that's mocking you, some of the same ones that's talking about you, they watching you, they waiting for you. And she going through the same thing. Many of her friends, my God, are oh, they playing? My God, we'll see how long. My God, the enemy is voting on you. The people is counting you out. Don't you know it's Christians even counting us out? People still don't think going on six years, we going to make it. Come on, somebody. But the devil is a lie. Who Oh my God, keep on standing. Oh my God, they're going to talk about you. Let them talk about you because you're standing in God. I can't get nobody to say nothing right now. So keep on standing. One more time, let's give God a hand for the man of God. <laughs> Write this down up on the point number two. You must desire it. Go ahead and turn my lapel back on, son, because I don't want to, you know, I get this microphone. I try to be Baptist. <laughs> Hallelujah. I ain't got nothing against Baptist. I just they like to tune up, but I ain't, I'm not. Uh, I want to drop something that's going to take you th to all the way to Thursday. My God, you must desire the kingdom. Do you desire the kingdom? I know you're crying. It's okay. Stay with me, though. Do you desire God's kingdom? Do you desire God's kingdom? Some of you need to come closer. Some of you are dangling. All somebody got to do is push you and you're gone. Out of order. If you're going to go, go. Don't, 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 don't make your things uncomfortable for yourself. I'm sorry that we deal with lifestyle and it's, it, we, we, we provoke you, my God, to change in a good way because God wants you to change. I'm sorry that I don't preach emotionalism sermons. You know what I'm trying to say? It's tied up and mixed up and all that. If you catch what I be saying, I know I talk fast. My God, but at the end of the day, my God, it's a whole lot on the inside. My God, the principles, my God, that if you take and apply in your life, you'll be free. You won't be struggling with hangups and habits. God will set you free. It's a process of deliverance. It's a process of healing. It's a process of restoration. That's why you got to stay in God's will. The steps of a good man, a woman, are ordered by the Lord. Quit disconnecting every time something gets hard. Keep showing up, Shannon. Don't quit coming. Keep coming. No matter what, my God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My God, transformation is very painful. I just didn't arrive. You talking about 23 years of going through living hell. Woman of God to get to our bed and still going through it, my God. But I ain't tapped out, baby. Keep showing up. Yes, sir. Most people quit at the first signs of a persecution. They quit. Yeah. Soon as the word of God is sown into a man's heart, the Bible says the enemy come to steal it. Yes, yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Soon as it's sown. Some of y'all, the enemy, y'all gonna let the enemy steal what's happening in your life right now today. Because you ain't guarding it. If you want to be entertained, it's a lot of churches to go to, but this ain't the one. So do you desire the kingdom? Do you desire the kingdom? Let's go a little deeper then. We do what we really want to do. Write that down. We do what we really want to do. So if you want to be free, you can be free. If you want to stop, you can stop. Well, I can't. Well, that's why you need two. Two is better than one. So you got to get somebody to come into agreement with you. You got to be, get, you got to be, you got to have somebody to hold you accountable. Say, look at her, man. I need you to hold me accountable. Look at her, sis. I need you to hold me accountable. And don't get mad when she calls you at one o'clock in the morning and, and you ain't answering your phone. 
And then she said, where was you at? I drove past your house. The car wasn't outside. Oh, I went there. You said hold you accountable. See, you must have went over his house. You made it three days, but now look where now you in. That's a hard on the women, knowing because I love you. I love you. This pastor, love you. This pastor, care about your life. So do you desire the kingdom? And remember this, you do what you want to do. If you don't want to love somebody, you ain't going to love them. If you don't want to give, you're not going to give. If you don't want to flip the pages, you're not going to do it. If you don't want to pray, you're not going to pray. Come on, somebody, you do what you want to do. And you and I are what we really want to be. You do what you want to do, and you are what you want to be. Y'all should be writing that down, man. You do what you want to do, and you are what you want to be. So what do you want to be? Do you want to be that king and queen that God predestined you to be? Do you want to be that, do you want to operate, my God, in that royalty that God predestined you to do? Do you want to have dominion over everything, my God, like God predestined you to do? You're going to do what you want to do, and you're going to be what you want to be. Do you want to be a queen, or do you want to be a flunky? Do you want to be a king, or do you want to be sorry? What you want to be is your, it's real simplicity, but it's Bible. What do you want to be in life? You determine that. If ain't nobody got no, my gun to your head, anybody got you held hostage, my God, you could be whatever you want to be. Barack Obama proved that. The late Dr. Miles Miles Rowe proved that he went from sleeping on a dirt road when he was a little kid. He lived in a hut, my God, and the the floor wasn't carpet, it wasn't wood, it was dirt. They called him a monkey. They laughed. They said like a monkey. They laughed at him. But the man, oh my God, if I had time, mama. Oh my God, but the man of God went from sleeping on a dirt road to flying his own, my God, personal jets that was paid for. He died completely debt free. Oh my God, I thank God. The man of God, oh Tony, if they only knew Dr. Mountain Road. Are you talking about somebody went from sleeping on a dirt, muddy road? They said, you a monkey. You ain't gonna never be nothing. That man, my God, set with my God. People that moves and make decisions to move the countries. They're my lying, mama. I'm talking about he made decisions, my God, ooh, Tony and Madonna, I tell y'all, my God, who Dr. Mal went from a dirt road, my God, to having enough authority as a representative of the Bahamas, my God, to, my God, he had dignitaries from all over the world sitting in his, yeah. diplomats that sit in his presence, yeah. they would come just to get an audience with him, yeah. oh my God, they would fly from all over the world just to come sit with the great doctor who started out on a dirt road, my God, and they said he was a monkey, they said he wasn't going to be nothing, oh my God, but he had a road full of people that caused a shot that make the world go around, they said, talk to me, feed me, oh my God, I speak to me, my God. Quit disqualifying yourself. No matter where you start, it's about where you end up at, baby. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. It ain't where you start, it's where you end up at. Somebody, oh my God, you the only one caught it. She the only one caught it. It ain't where you start, but it's where you end up at. Somebody give God a hand. Where you gonna end up at, Sparkle? It ain't where you start, it's where you end up at, Ken Ken. It ain't where I started, it's where I'm at today. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, where I started from ain't nothing but a testimony. Where I come from ain't nothing but a testimony. It ain't where you start, baby, it's where you end up at. God got great things for you, woman of God. Keep on showing up, baby. Oh, my God, keep on pushing, baby. Oh, my God, go from a dirt road to flying your own jet. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mm. I know it, my God. Matthew 5 and 6 says, God blesses those who hunger and thirst after justice. Another word for justice is righteousness. God blesses, my God, Bryce, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. God blesses those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Not church. Not not recognition. Not denominational. It's okay to get a degree, but don't let your degree become your God. It's okay to look good and dress good and ride good, but don't let that become your God. God satisfies those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. You should, as kingdom citizens and ambassadors of the kingdom, you should, my God, (laughs) desire to be right, to do right, and live right. Write those down. Desire to do right, be right, and live right. Do right, be right, and live right. You should desire that. The next thing you and I should be doing, my God, we must derive it. We are to seek his righteousness. God is not interested. Watch me now because I'm going to miss you if you ain't with me. My God, God is not interested in your righteousness or my righteousness. He's only interested in his righteousness. God is not interested in what you can do for him. Stay with me because see, this is where you got to be careful that you don't get over into works. And I have to watch this myself because works, you doing good things don't mean you going to heaven. You lined up at everything I'm talking about. Living right, shouting right. <laughs> uh, depart from me, you workers of him. 
Lord, Lord, did not preach in your name, did not prophesy in your name, did not do this in your name. He said, depart from me, you workers over in there. about what you drive and where you being and all that stuff, who you know and all that. It don't mean nothing. God said, I never knew you. Yeah. Guess what? Lord, 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 did not prophesy, did not teach, preach, whatever. Them wasn't unbelievers. Them was professing Christians that try to present their works on Judgment Day. And God said, I never knew you. I never became Lord. Oh, my God, you professed Christianity, but you never submitted to me. I never was Lord in your life. Oh, my God, you preached, you went to the jails, you saved souls, you did crusades, you did revivals, you fed the homeless, you did all that. But you never formed an intimate relationship. I never yeah. knew you intimately. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I said, God said, I never knew you intimately. <laughs> oh, my God, you never came deeper. Yeah, you stayed yeah, on the outer yeah, court. Yeah, <laughs> I said, you stayed on the outer court. <laughs> You never came through the tabernacle from the outer court to the inner court to the holiest of holy. See, you got to get to the point where you seek, my God, to get into the holiest of holy where sin cannot live. Where, my God, you give up your will and it becomes his will. Where your desires become his desires, my God. He said, you never got to the point where you love me enough. Oh, my God, my God, you many of us have left our first love. We got to repent, my God. Oh, my God, we're not intimate enough with God. We don't hunger enough for God. We don't desire God. Oh, my God, we operate in self-righteousness, my God. But God said, I don't want all that. Yeah. I want to work through you. Yeah, yeah. God uses you and I to advance his kingdom. Yeah, yeah. He want to work through you, man of God. Yeah. Now that you didn't step down and resign to advance your kingdom. Yeah. To advance God's kingdom. Yeah. He want to work through you. Yeah. Can he use your hands? Can he use your influence, Barry? Can he, he, he going to use your testimony, Kendall? It's okay. He's going to use your testimony. Oh, my God. God is doing something, daughter. Just hang on in there. Oh, my God. My wife had to go through the same thing you went through. When I was sick and strung out and everything, she cried all the time, baby. Oh, my God. It's all good. Just hang on in there. With the enemy meant for bad, daughter, I'm building. God going to turn it around. Many souls going to come to know Christ because of that right there. Y'all, testimony, baby. It's hard right now. It was good for me that I was afflicted. Tell yourself Psalm 119, 71. It said it was good for me that I was afflicted. Before I went afflicted, I went astray. Sometimes affliction make you pray longer. Sometimes hard trials make you study longer. Oh my God, some of us need to be afflicted. Some of us need to go through some trial. We too have minded. We too focused on what we look like external. And we ain't in love with God like we used to be. So God got to send a trial, my God, to get your butt back hungry and get you back focused on the things of God. Hey, some, oh my God, somebody give God a hand. I didn't lost you. I didn't lost you. Look at the video. You heard it. God got to send a trial to get you refocused. It was good for me, the psalmist said I was afflicted. Oh my God, it's good to go through something. The hotter the fire, the purer the gold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't let God be on you. Don't come feel the goodness of the Lord and jump and shout. Don't let God get in you. When he get in you, he gonna change your life. When he get in you, he gonna put you in places, my God, where you can be a testimony for the kingdom. Oh, they said they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. God is building your testimony. Just hang on in there. I know it's painful, and I know you don't understand. Oh, but God is working out. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Oh, he's a way maker when it seems like there is no way. He's a bridge over troubled water. Oh, my God, God will take you over troubled water. You ain't got to go through it. He'll take you over it. My God, who am I talking to in the church? Just hang on. Hang on to your chains. Come. Hang on to God. Say, now come out. My God. Hey. Oh, my God. Somebody give God some glory in the house of the Lord. Mm. Oh, Jesus. And the last point, I got to give you this. The last point. <laughs> Ah, uh, thank you, Lord. Ah, I remember I teach y'all, you ain't got to wait to the altar call. When God speak, you do what you do. Get to the altar. That's what you got to do, baby. Remember, God found Joseph. I mean, God, Joseph was in the house serving, and he caused the armor bearer to take notice of him. And so, my God, when your priorities is right, it affects your lifestyle. So now that what used to be on top of you is no longer on top of you. Then you can walk in freedom. Yeah, yeah. Then you can preach with the Holy Ghost, say preach. Yeah. Then you can talk about things that a lot of people can't talk about because they're doing it in their private life. Yeah. Come on, because you're free. Yeah. And anything, let me show this with y'all to build you. Anything that's on top of you right now, when God delivers you from it, testify. Because yeah. 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 God allows stuff to stay on you so people can see it. And then when he delivers you, they can give God the glory for it. Sometimes God would allow your sin to embarrass you. Oh 
God will allow your sin to embarrass you. Because you know what? Because he knew how to turn it around for your good. My life embarrassed me once upon a time. Now I'm using it to torment the devil. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me, let, amen. let me bring some context to that. I'm trying to share. So what do you look like? John Storks playing NBA basketball against Michael Jordan and Reggie Miller and me and her. I'm walking down the street selling my clothes for crack, living in abandoned houses. People are like, don't your brother play NBA basketball? I'm like, yeah. Man, that's John Storks, brother. Look how he look, man. Look at this. Man, look at him, man. Man, if that was my brother, man, I'd be all up in the games. I'd be up there. Man, I'd be kicking it if that was my brother. Selling my clothes. I wore nine and one shoes. It's like 12 and 13. And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to show you something. See, that ain't where I started from, woman of God. You look at, you sit up under a real man that's been really, really delivered and transformed, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God allowed me. God didn't allow me, but my life and my choice and my decision caused a lot of embarrassment to my wife, to my children. Where my daughter go? She probably, you know, she okay? She okay? Check on my daughter. My God, you know both she kid out about you. I know I left her and I left Juju for my addiction. Y'all know the story. See what I'm trying to say? Oh my God, but I, it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. To be once upon a time, oh my God, my classmate, raise your hand, Valerie. Right there, she's like, come to school and hold my money because I used to have two, three thousand dollars and stuff in my pocket and stuff, and they'd be messing with me because I was having plenty of money. But then I got turned out on my own product. Yeah. And then I got sick and started, yeah. oh my God, I can't, oh my God. And then, it, so, so my, for my choices embarrassed me. People couldn't understand. Man, Judy got sick. Ken Ken over there, raise your hand, Ken Ken there, tell you my partner. Jude, man, what's up, baby? Come on, man. You better than this. Sick. Sick. Completely at the yeah. bottom, Trey Trey. Completely at the bottom. How low do you get when you take your clothes off? These, when I got on, $100 clothes. And sell them for crack cocaine. On, and get on some regular clothes. Who testify about that unless they free? And so because when I gave my life to Christ, thank y'all, but I got to finish. And I'm not in the flesh. I'm in the spirit. My God, because I set my priorities right when I gave my life to Christ, April 30th, 1995, in that 6 by 9 prison cell, my priorities is right and has been right. So then here y'all come. Here come a church that I never even knew I was called to birth. See, God was thinking about me when I was walking up and down this, thinking about you, Trey, when I was walking up and down this street. Here, come on around here, Jamie. Y'all. Come on real quickie. Come on. Come on, Jamie. Y'all. Here go, here go. Jamie y'all who, 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 who growed up with my, my son and my daughter. Little kid. Mama right there, raise your hand, Antoinette. She watched me grow up in ministry. Our kids played sports together. Jamie Yon got a testimony. He too got the same testimony that they had. They, they got kindred spirit because they both was drug addicts like their pastors used to be. But then he come to this ministry. After he watched this person, baby, cold that uh, he used to stay away for her because he was somewhat kind of screwed up because I was still raw when I came home from prison trying to work it out. But he came to the ministry when his mama told him, Juju then started a church. Jamie Yon said, I'm going. So Jamie Yon gets hurt. <laughs> oh, my God, still struggling like you, Trey, <laughs> with a cold-blooded addiction and a whole lot of more stuff. <laughs> oh, my God, but he got submitted in line with the under-shepherd of the king. <laughs> and now he's been set free for over a year. Over a year, it's a change now. Somebody give God a hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I could go on and on. The Spirit of God could go on and on, baby. I don't even want to start messing with my daughters because we, we, we're losing then. Come here, Valerie. I got to do this one. So I'm trying to let y'all see something. So here go a person that I went to high school with. Used to braid my hair because I had long, pretty hair and braid my hair. I used to come with my hair all forked out like Prince and Jesse Jackson, John said, him, come on, somebody. With my hair, she braided my hair, hold my money and all that old type of stuff, my God. But she told herself, my God, when I would come preach at Pine Street Christian Church, which she used to go to, she wouldn't have never, ever, ever thought that this man right here that she's standing beside would be her pastor. You talking about my high school. 
classmate yeah. who yeah. seen me at the lowest of lowest and at the yes. highest of highest. Yes. And now she's totally submitted her yes. deliverance, her healing, yes. and everything yes. came from me. Yes. Stephanie goes all the way back to Greenwood Christian Center with me and Tony Mason and Janice and all of us is there and she pulled up on this property two, three years ago three years ago literally she had lost her mind she was shaking smoking cigarettes she, she, was, she was out of her mind out of her mind out of her mind literally suicidal and everything But God brought her right to this church, and she didn't even know this was my church, to this church. God has healed and restored Stephanie Mind. Yeah. When she found out that I was the pastor of going over Christ Church, she ain't never left. Been her ever since. Set free and in her right mind. This last thing, I'm giving y'all this and I won't preach it. I'm just going to give it to you. When your priorities is right, it affects your lifestyle. Romans 12, 1 and 2 will be your life. Transformed. Look at him. He's reaching down the right. That's good. He's becoming a student. That's a disciple. He's a student. <laughs> then when you seek first the kingdom and make first things first, your priorities is right, your lifestyle is right, and then you end up in number three, prosperity. So let me give y'all this. And then you understand it's okay to shine a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Screw the tray, tore up the church. Mm. Now the Lord said that if you will seek his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. You got to read before and after to understand what he's talking about, but I'm going to give it to you. Now what things, now what things? Listen to this, y'all. It's going to bring some deliverance because you need to come to the rest. Hebrews, there's a rest in God where you cease from wondering, cease from worrying, cease from being stressed out. But you got to come. You got to come. There's a rest, Hebrews, that God is calling the body of Christ to. That some will not enter, the Bible says, because of unbelief. Don't let unbelief keep you on the other side of you stressed out, worrying about stuff that God said you shouldn't be worrying about. My God. What things, now what things the Lord is referring to. He's talking about all these things that people worry about in Matthew 6, 19. Write that down. We are told people worry about finances. I don't even want to mess with it because I told you I wouldn't. People worry about finances. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 19, don't store up treasure here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroy them and thieves break in and steal them. Let me bring some context to the scripture because some people think that you're supposed to be poor. The devil is a lot of one. My God was super rich. All you gotta do is read the script. Man, hold on, keep me. Mm. People has literally taken scripture out of context. That's why you gotta be very careful what you're sitting on, sitting up under. And understand this is my spiritual father, Bishop Gary McIntosh, taught me. Everything that you Google don't mean that it's God. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that you read online don't mean that it's God. You better pray that God give you discerning and spirit so you can know what's God and what ain't God. Let me give you this, because I know I got to get you out of here. My God. But it said, don't store up treasures. They try to say, well, God don't want you to have no money. That's not the Bible. In verse 25, we are told that people, and you could do this. This is in Matthew 6. You could do this. It says in verse 25, we are told that people worry about food. That is why Jesus said, I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. God says, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? God asks a question. 
in your life, your life, give me and tell me that all you wake up to, my God, Janice, watch this. Give me and tell me that all you and I, all the power that's afforded to us, all the deliverance and all the healing, all the healing, all the deliverance and all the healing, all the deliverance and all the healing. Come here, tell me, bring it down. Don't follow me. All the deliverance and all the healing, everything that's afforded, afforded to you, everything that's afforded to you, everything that the kingdom says that belongs to you and I, Margaret, everything. Do you understand what is afforded to you as a citizen of God's kingdom? Yeah. And so therefore, we can, as citizens of the kingdom, we have ownership. We are joint heirs to everything that's in heaven. We have access. All we got to do is get the right key and we can access anything and everything that we need. And God saying, you are worried about some, God saying, my God, you worried about some food? All you live for is for some clothes? All you concerned about is getting your nails and your toes done? Yeah. All you concerned about is getting an outfit so you can go to the club? No. That's uh, that shit. God's like, please, daughters and sons. Yes. Life is more than that. He said, if you seek me, you don't have to worry about this stuff. You're going to live in abundance. Yeah. You're going to have a super abundance, super abundance, super abundance. You don't have to worry about this stuff. All that's part of the package. Yeah. Yeah. All the stuff that you and I are working like dogs and slaves, my God, to have. God said, that's part of the package. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't give it to you like I want to give it to you because your heart is not right. Yeah. You're not submitted. I'm not top priority. Your priorities are set on, mature, on getting material treasures. And now don't fall in, in love with the God who can give you the treasures. Yes. Don't worship it. Worship the God that can give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Why wear your back clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how things grow. They don't work. I make their clothing. Now all these things, now all, now all of these things are things that we need. Yes, we need clothes. Yes, we need food. That's why the Lord says in verse 33, see, you're going to never catch God slipping. I know you need this stuff. God know you got these kids to take care of they need pampers. God know what your daughter needs, Shannon. God know what your grandchildren need. God know what your deacon and them babies need, baby coat. He understands, y'all. God, the Bible says, I'm trying to shift, my God. The Bible says God isn't touched by your infirmities. Yeah. He yes. knows what's going on with you. Thank you Lord. He's trying to move you so that he can bless you. Yeah. He's trying to position you, my God, so that he can give you, my God, the desires of your heart according to his will for your life. All you got to do is come and submit to him. Come and make him Lord of your life and quit being Lord of your own life. Quit telling God what you is going to do and what you ain't going to do. Quit, quit being in rebellion to your oversight. Quit being in rebellion, my God, to your loved ones. Come on. Quit being in That's not the heart of God. You are disqualifying yourself from all the kingdom resources. And you frustrated. We frustrated because things don't happen. But God said you're not lined up according to the kingdom. You got to be in proper alignment. When you break your arm in order for your arm to heal, they got to realign it. A lot of us is out of line. We need to be realigned. My God, we got to fall back in love with our first love. Come on, Revelation. Again. So that you don't have to worry about food. You wake up and all you want about is how you going to feed your kids. How you going to buy pampers and diapers. I'm not being insensitive. You worry about stuff that God said, son, daughter, I died so that I can give you all that. Don't let that be your God. Don't let that be your focus. Are you, are you wake up every day and you dress up and, and you buy all this stuff because you're trying to be cute because you're trying to attract a man? Men, are you trying to find your, men, what are you doing? Your purpose is in God. You created in God's image. I told y'all last week there's a hole in you that only God can feel. Sex, men can't feel it. Yeah. If you got to beat your chest because you got 10 kids, you don't take care of none of them, you feel good about that, you are weak. Yeah. I tried to fill my life with drugs and gangs. I couldn't. I was empty. Yeah. Yeah. When God filled me, I've been filled ever since. Yes, I'm trying to help you. Yeah. Clothes and cars. I done done it all. It don't do nothing. Minister, I've even had all that. $10,000 a week, Oliver used to make. $10,000 a week selling dope. Plenty of money. And was empty and broke, he'll tell you. Broke spiritually, broke mentally, had 10000 We would lose $10,000 on a night gambling. Didn't y'all of them? All kind of money and empty. $10,000 a week he was making out there and was empty and miserable. Boy, I'm going to let him share his testimony. Ooh, Barry, Mike, don't get me started. I'm trying to shift. And help me don't mean nothing, LaJuan. You can have all this stuff. And be empty. Yeah. Yeah. And be empty. 
Seek first the kingdom. Seek righteousness. Fall in love with Jesus. Stay on the battlefield. Understand that God loves you. Understand that God want to give you so much prosperity that'll blow your mind. God got everything in store for you. He got everything. Quit worrying about clothes and all this stuff. Get right with God and he'll bless you. He'll take you from $12, my God, to $20. He'll take you from a dirt road to your own jet. Boy, don't get me started. Mm. Write these last three things down. You don't need everything you want. Write this down. You don't need everything you want. I'm done. I'm not finna preach. You don't need everything you want. You don't need everything you want, Barry. It's a whole lot of things we want. I can't wait you get <clears throat> straight to Jaguar. I need it. 2020, whatever you want. 2020, 2020. Come on in. I have to bring a little sense of humor to calm my emotions down because I'm not trying to preach. You don't need everything you want. When your priorities is right, you realize I don't need that. When you've been there and done that, it don't move you, Brandon. Brandon, you didn't have money. You didn't done it all, Brandon. You, you, peace. Number two, you don't need everything you want. Number two is you don't want everything you need. You don't really want it when your priorities is right. And number three, God doesn't give us everything we want, but he gives us everything we need. God doesn't give us everything we want, but but does gives us every but do give us everything we need. He gives us everything we need if you seek first his kingdom, and not just the kingdom, and then he says, live righteously. That takes the mandate off of God and put it on you and I. God has given us through his constitution and relationships everything we need to live for him. None of us should be defeated. None of us should be dominated. Whatever you head bow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the time. But I had to allow the spirit of God to birth it. While your head is bowed, and you may be here, my God, and you have never accepted Christ. Not only are you willing and ready to confess with your mouth, but you're ready to believe and make him Lord of your life. You're ready to experience this kingdom that this pastor is talking about. I want my priorities right because if my priorities is off, my life will be off. I want my lifestyle to change so my family, my children, my former wife, or ex-wife, or wife now, or family members can respect me because they don't respect me now. And then the pastor said too, my God, if I do them two things, that's all I got to do is that I'm going to live over here in some, some level of prosperity. That means I don't have to worry about how I'm about pampers and food and all of them type of stuff. I mean, I, I, and I, I'm working every day, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I get up for. Uh, I worked, my God, for, just for food and clothes and to pay a light bill. And, you mean tell me life is more than that? If that's you, if that's you, and you want to give your life to Christ, and you know that for a fact that you're not saved, and you want to give your life to Christ, raise your hand. Anybody. 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 Come on down, sister. Come on down. Y'all two that raise your hand. Come on down. Come on. Grab them. Grab them for me. Come on. Y'all bring them on down. Let him come by her. Amen. Not only did she join the ministry, she's ready to submit to the Lord. Come on down, woman of God. Go right there. Amen. Amen. See, sometimes you got to linger. See, when you are stuck on tradition and worried about what time it is and don't want to offend nobody because you don't want nobody to leave your church, my God, because if they leave you, you ain't going to pay your bills. So I don't worry about none of that. So if it's 3.20, I 
22 and it took all of that. If that's what it took for these, then praise be to God. Anybody else? Anybody else? You, you're not saved. He ain't Lord. Okay, thank you. The second group. I'm going to shift the game on you. You're saved, but he ain't Lord. Get up and come. He, you saved, but he's not Lord. That means you don't have rulership over your life. You do what you want to do when you want to do it, how you want to do it. Then come. You got habits and hangups that's still on top of you that God set you free from. But you just ain't operating like it. Don't you come. He saved you, but he's not Lord. You ought to be up. You saved, but you ain't surrendered to him. You do what you want to do, when you want to do it, and how you want to do it. You ought to be here. Get this on the film, April. I don't, don't close, don't turn it off. That people out there in social media need to see all this type of stuff. It's souls over here. If you're ready for him to be Lord, you're ready for him to be Lord. If you're not 100% sold out, you ought to be up here. You're sick and tired of worrying about foods and clothes and how you gonna pay your car insurance and you know what I'm saying, uh, lights get turned off. You tell all that old uh, mediocrity living, you ought to be up for it. Mm. Yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. Mm. Yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Many of us struggle with a gambling addiction because they made gambling legal. My God, you go up there, you spend all God's money, you rob him, you don't pay your tithes. If you're struggling with not paying your tithes, that means he's not Lord of your life. Then you should be up for it. We ain't got no stones at all. Not this past either. All of us got something. If you're not honoring God with your tithing, you're not honoring God with your life, you don't read your Bible, you don't spend time in prayer, you blew off the consecration, you ought to be up here so you can make it right. All I'm trying to do is get you to set your priorities right. I ain't trying to throw no stones at you. I ain't trying to judge you. I'm trying to provoke you to get your life back in order with God. Yes, she came out of the boat so you can get your life right. Amen. They coming, they coming, they coming, they coming, they coming. Come on in closer, come on in closer. My God, my God. Yes, Lord. Mm. If you're picking and choosing when you come to church, you come to church when you want to. That's called disobedience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Oh, my God. You tell yourself, I worked all week, so I only got one day off. My God. Well, guess what? Sunday is the Lord's day. So how you going to have one day off? <laughs> come on, somebody. You should have one day off, my God. And so you ought to be up here right now. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. If you need restoration in your mind, if you need restoration in your relationships, come on up. Come on up. I'm not leaving no stones in the Holy Ghost turned. I'm turning everything in the spirit. Restoration, restoration. God, restore the joy. If you have left your first love, you should be up here. <laughs> If you are religious, my God, and you focus on the outside and your heart is wicked, you're in sexual sin or whatever it is, I'm calling it like it is. You should be up here so that you can get free. Oh, my God, you done done it all, done seen it all, but he's still not Lord of your life. You should be right here, my God, so that you can get free. Today is the day of salvation. Choose this day, my God, whom you going to serve. I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Lawanya, come up here, daughter, and help me with some of these women. Lawanya, come up and help me, daughter. My God, we'll get ready to pray. Antoinette, come help me. Get ready to pray. She's coming. She's coming. Bring the woman of God up here. Oh, my God. She da 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 Lord, oh, shut down. Mm. Thank you, Lord. You need to be restored. <laughs> hey, my God. Sometimes we can think we outgrown something. And we ain't outgrown it. We just left because we don't want to live right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? If you're in between a decision, should or should I not? I'm ready to let go, God. I'm tired. I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to let go, God. I don't know. Should I stay? Should I go? Should I take this job? Should I do this? Should I invest this money? Should I do this? If you're in between decisions, amen, woman of God, then come. See, I'm in the spirit. I see y'all. Come on. Come on. Come on. Help her. Help her. Help her, Sheila. Come on. Come on. Bring God. Help her, Barry. Help her. Her leg is hurt, but I need her up top. Come on, son. Come on. See, I'm in the spirit, baby. I ain't in the flesh. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Help her down. Come on, help her down. Uh, uh, uh. uh Pastor Chell, help the woman of God down. Pastor, thank you, son. Okay, baby Cole. Yes, sir. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Woo. You about ready? Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My last one. She cut da da la boo. Eat a boo she. Thank you, Lord. Emotional healing. Mental healing. Thank you. Emotional healing. Thank you. Thank you. Amen, Mama. She da da la bo. She da She ke da da la la bo. Wait for mother. She coming. She da la la bo. She ke da Thank you, Lord. In between decisions. That's you. Come on. Come on. If you believe in God like I am for your children, you should be up here too. If you got children that you know is after, then they, they, you got to be here for them. You come and stand for them. It may not be about you, but it's about them. That's called standing in proxy for your children. That's called standing up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, Lord, it's heavy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're here, this is your first time making Jesus first of all Lord and Savior. I think it, I think it was you too, and if there's anyone that came after them that made that decision pastor said you were on the fence if you'll just lift your hands real quick just lift your hands amen lift those hands up just lift your hands up your first time accepting christ as king as lord so i want I want you guys to repeat after me and i want everyone in the building to repeat after me as well and this will also include those who pastor said that you have lived life your way he's been your savior but he's not been your lord he's not been the one who owns your life the lord is the owner he's the master the supreme god the only one that you can submit to if you want to make him lord today i'm going to include you in this particular prayer as well so i want you all to repeat after me everyone in the building then we'll move to the emotional healing prayer hallelujah say this with me father god here I am I am yours and today I want to denounce my life from yesterday I want to denounce every dark place every dark thing and even every dark spirit that I've been involved with so today I come into the light of the kingdom of God and I accept you Lord Jesus Christ as my king and I submit myself to your kingdom and I decree today that I'm saved that I am saved that I am saved I am yours and I'm going to live from this moment forward in the light of your kingdom and I will reject everything and everybody that I've been submitted to in my past. Today, I start my life new. I start all over. I am born again, not just by the flesh, but in my spirit. I belong to Christ. I am God's. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise right there. Hallelujah. Now, with every hand raised at this altar, Father, I thank you that we boldly confess today. I want you to just be honest with God in this room. 
and just say this with me I'm gonna lead you in another prayer just say this with me I am confessing that I have struggled with emotional healing I've been hurt I've been wounded I've been unforgiving I have been holding grudges I have been in dark places I have not let anybody in that dark place I have not allowed the healing virtue of God to set me free so today I'm coming into the light I'm coming into the place of healing Lord come inside heal me completely Lord I forgive those who I've been holding in unforgiveness Lord I let them go Lord I let it go Lord I let them go Lord I let them go Lord I let them go set me free and set them free heal my soul I don't want to be in pain anymore I want to walk in healing I decree come on say it like you mean it I decree that I am healed my emotions are healed my soul is healed my soul is healed my soul is healed my soul is healed in the name of Jesus Lord I give you praise right now somebody give God some praise hallelujah lift your hands all over this building sickness is illegal in the kingdom of God sickness is illegal in the kingdom of God so decree today that I'm free I'm free I'm free from sickness I'm free from sickness I'm free from physical sickness I'm free from emotional sickness my body is healed my mind is healed my heart is healed my soul is healed for I am in the kingdom of God come on with both hands raised let's just sing a, a just a short part of this this very sweet chorus just says for your glory come on I will do anything I will do anything just to see you tell him just to see you to behold you as my king to behold Come on, tell him for your glory. Come on. For your glory. Lord, I will do anything. Come on. I will do anything. Come on, tell him just to see you. Just to see you. To behold you as my king. Come on. To behold you as my king. One more time, just tell him for your glory. For your glory, tell the Lord I'll do anything. I will do anything just to see you. Just to see you. Come on, to behold you as my king. Come on, to behold you as. Come on, can you sing it out real strong? Tell him for your glory. This is our surrender just to see you. Just to see you. To behold you as my To king. behold you as my Because I want to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Come on, is that your prayer? I want to be where you are. Tell him I want to be where. I want to be where you are. Come on, there's peace where he is. I gotta be where you are. If you need peace, just say peace is where you are. Peace is where you are. Yeah, yeah, tell him peace is where you are. Peace is yeah. where you are. 
Come on, and I gotta be where you gotta be where. For peace, one more time. Peace is where you are. Peace is where you are. Peace is where you are. Come on. Can we just say grace is where you are? Grace is where you are. Come on, we need grace for 2019. We need grace in 2019. Come on. Church, grace, grace. grace is where if you've been you feeling are. like you've not been loved, just say love is where you are. Love is where you are. Oh, love is where love you are. is where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, church. Love you are. say this first of all to get out by she get out by stay in that river stay in that river i want to make this decree to all those that came that did not go to orientation make sure you stop in the lobby uh, and see minister tanya minister tanya minister Ms. tanya right here also to all of my first time guests let me say this let me say this because the spirit of god put it on my heart yeah. to my first time guests and this is your first time we don't stay in church for four five six seven hours we're not a black church to stay in church all day long that's not who we are, but the Spirit of God moved today, and so we are here. But this is not the typical time that we, the length of time that we stay in church. It's 340. We don't be in church that long like that. But I want you to understand that souls came, including you, my God, had, my God, to experience this level of service. Sometimes you have to tarry. Sometimes you have to spend a little longer with God, my God, my God. So don't ever, my God, uh, get offended because you get to spend time in the house of the Lord. But I do want to say this, my God, we don't stay in church like that but when god moves, we make room for the spirit of the living god to move we don't quench the spirit of the living god in this church anytime that you my god you come here and you got to make an exit you can do so but we don't stop my god because you got you say it's from one to three so you hold god to one to three and if he want to show up to five then he can be here to five come on god's in control of this church also too to all those that's here if you are not at work you're not out of town Please, ladies, as well as 16-year-old and up, come to the men's meeting. It's where men meet with men and women with women. If you're spying out the land, you're not a member of the church, you want to learn about the church, just come, just come. Men is with men and women with women. My God, we have prayer from 6 to 7, then we have men's meeting from 7 to 8, 30. We won't be here to 10, 11, 12 o'clock, none of that stuff. So just come, invite a friend, invite a friend. But I want you to know I'm proud of you. God bless you. Receive your healing. Everything that you came to the altar for, receive it. Receive it. If it was emotional healing, first time salvation, whatever it is, then recommit yourself to make him Lord. Receive it. I want to share this to the ladies. Y'all look at me. The Bible says in Peter that the real beauty of a woman is internal. It's not external. And I'm not saying y'all making a jock case. I just want you to know that 
God is concerned about what's on the inside. Let God purify the inside. As I'm talking to y'all, I'm talking to everybody that's a female in this church. As God purify the inside, he's going to purify the outside. He's going to heal you. You're a fearful and wonderful man. You got a lot of pain, daughter, but God going to heal it. But you got to keep showing up. You got to keep showing up. You can't be spotted. You can't hit and miss. If you're not out of town, in the hospital, whatever, 7 o'clock, come on, surrender. Come on, surrender. Come on, surrender. Take your time. Stay down now. Stay down now, woman of God. Don't stay down now. We'll stay. Uh, our people know how to work. We work, my God. Today is a new day for you. Today is a new day, a brand new you. You're still pretty on the outside, but you're born again on the inside. Now you gotta feed that spirit inside by reading, praying, and showing up. If you're not busy tomorrow, seven o'clock, I wanna see you here. Amen. 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 Say this as I close. I love you. Look at me, son. I love you. Keep showing up. Ken, look at me. If you want your husband, listen to me. Just like you seen those other two get free, there's many more of them got free. But let's look at me. I'm gonna talk to you. If you want Kendall delivered, you gotta start coming to church. This church, his deliverance is tied to the God that lives in a bad end. This church, you can't be all over the place, my God, and then you're gonna keep dealing with that pain until you come and submit, my God, right here, so that your Kindle can get free. Because you know, can't anybody pastor him? It takes a real one to reach a real one, my God. So if you come, he got to come. Quit going all over the place, daughter, because it's you holding him up from getting free. If you're not out of town or in the hospital, you be at this men's and women's meeting tomorrow night. Are you listening to me, son? Yeah. As the priest, prophet, and king of your home. Even though you're not operating like that, my God, because you're sick like I was. But you are a priest, you are a prophet, and you are the king of the home, man of God. And God is going to bring deliverance to you when you surrender, Kendall. Mm, my God. Father God, now as we release the sheep, Father God, we release the sheep into purpose. I thank you, Father God, for all that you've done today. Thank you for all the healing. Thank you. Ken, Ken, thank you. I want you to listen to me, Ken, Ken. You listen to me because I want you to hold Ken, Ken accountable. I want you to commit to 21 days starting today. And I want you to count from today into February, 21 days. And I want you every single day, Ken, Ken, listen to me, man, for 21 days. From today, whatever, next 21 days to in February is, whatever it is, I want you to pray for the person that killed your daughter. 21 days. I want you to speak blessings. I want you to speak healing. And you know how them blessings and healing may come? He may get arrested. He may be found out. Pray for your enemies. That's what Jesus says. Pray for 21 days. I'm talking about pray. And if he don't do it, you pray for him, woman of God. 21 days. My God, for that person that killed that, uh, that, that baby. Because we need him found. Pray. But pray well-being. Because sometimes God has to unlock us for forgiveness so he can unlock other people. The Bible says vengeance is God's. I know the old Ken Ken. I'm talking about blast on sight. Bang and kill on sight. Pray 21 days, Ken Ken. Hold him accountable for that baby. I said baby because he's probably a kid, Ken Ken. Pray for him. And let God take care of it. And then that would have got you, that, that was hurting us, us emotionally. God would bring it because it was done in the dark he said got to come to the light pray for him 21 days Ken Ken somebody give God a hand for that come on come on 21 days 21 days thank you Holy Ghost and some of y'all they got some people that you can't forgive pray for them for 21 days 
pray for them for 21 days. 21 days, you can break a habit or start a habit, a good habit. Come on. 21 days, start praying for the people that's wrong you. Start praying for your supervisor. Start praying for that husband. Start praying for that wife. Start praying for those kids. Start praying for some of the people that's hurt you and caused you so much pain. Commit to prayer. Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Oh, my God. When you do that, God, unlock it, my God, and bring you healing. Because forgiveness ain't about them. It's about you. You can't get free because you won't let them get free. Even though they wronged you and hurt you, pray for them. That's what the king says to the subject. Pray for your enemies. That's God. Pray for your enemies. 21 days. Pray for the people that's hurt you. Pray for the people that's lied on you and talked about you. Pray for them and pray blessings. God bless him. Bless her. Call their names. And all the people that did that to your brothers, pray for them, son, like you've been doing. Watch what God do. That's what kingdom subjects do. They pray for their enemies. They don't stay bitter. They get better. Father God, I thank you now as we release. I release them into your care. The sheep has came and got fed. I pray that you fed them. I pray that they leave out. Father God, fool and ready to go kill some giants in their lives. I release them into blessings. I release them into prosperity. And I thank you that all is well in the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and shout and say amen. You are dismissed.